The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is one of the most violent white supremacist gangs in the US. But in the world of high stakes drug trafficking, their white supremacist beliefs often come second to their desire to make money. The highest percentage of their income is from methamphetamine. Because of its centralized location, Houston is a major distribution hub for the meth trade, which also makes it the center of power and profit for the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. Millions of dollars in drugs and drug money flow through the region each year. In the Harris County Jail near Houston, Chevy Parnell is serving time for robbery. Parnell has been in the Brotherhood for 15 years. Yeah, I'm in for life. I'm bolting in. It means I, I shed blood for the family and uh, shed blood for the organization. I, I'm in the enforcer branch. It's more or less the police arm of the, the organization. Parnell is loyal to the existing leadership. He's trying to stop James Thompson's bid to take over the gang. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas split, all right? And we're trying to get the bros that split back in the line. So we're in, we're in a civil war. It's kind of bloody. There's been several murders. Like Thompson, Parnell is segregated from the prison population. I'm considered a high-value target because I've been in, affiliated with the Brotherhood for so long. So uh, they, they segregate me in order to keep me from hurting anybody else or to keep me from being hurt myself. Parnell, like Thompson, orchestrates his business from his cell as prison officials monitor his communications with the outside. He could be prosecuted for any illegal business he conducts, so he uses code to evade the guards and relies on members on the outside to keep the lines of communication open. I see them phones over there? They got a phone that rolls around to each, each cell. We call it the cell phone. <laughs> and uh, I use a three-way call to whoever I need to call. And uh, I have a, a sergeant at arms and uh, several foot soldiers under me. The Brotherhood is getting rich by muscling in on the methamphetamine trade in Texas. And Parnell is right in the thick of it. My area of expertise is I, I cook methamphetamine here in Texas. And they're importing it by the ton. We do a lot of business with the Mexican cartels. What we do is we'll liquefy the methamphetamine and we'll bring it over the border liquefied because uh, it doesn't smell as much when it's liquefied. And we don't have too much problems with the cartels because either we're doing business with them or we do it under the radar. According to Parnell, the gang traffics meth through a large network that includes outlaw motorcycle clubs and other white supremacist gangs. They often finance the transactions by robbing banks. A lot of times we'll have bulk shipments come across. A pound of methamphetamine goes for about $35,000 and we'll have several hundred pounds come across. We'll have to get with the upper members in order to secure that much money, or we'll have to, what's called, hit a lick. We'll uh, hit a bank to secure that much funds in order to pay, or we get it on more or less a layaway basis. They'll give it to us and allow us to pay it off in installments. As we sell it, then we pay the money back slowly. Methamphetamine is a manufactured drug that acts like speed. It's extremely addictive. Excessive use causes paranoia and can fuel violent and outrageous crimes. This video shot from a hidden camera inside a stolen car shows a man high on meth as he evades police. The drug is dangerous and for the ABT, extremely profitable but it causes huge problems for law enforcement. The town of Corpus Christi is a major stop on the ABT's meth trafficking route, from Mexico to their distribution hub in Houston. On the streets of Corpus Christi, Sergeant Paul Lesowski works on a tip he received about a dangerous Aryan Brotherhood leader who just got out of prison. You got my, uh, 
his nickname is Spider. He's known to deal in meth or ice. We've been trying to apprehend him where the lights, where you shining the light at. So that one right there. Yep, number 10. Nothing. Unfortunately, Mama has been protecting him, not giving him up, not not telling him if, if he's home. So. Then let's go check out the uh, the the mobile home parks. All right, man. I'll meet you out there. Uh, I believe he has several felonies on his on his record. Actually, he just got out of jail. In fact, for I believe it was for uh, uh, possession of controlled substance, and also I believe he had some weapons with him as well. You want to go in and see what we find? Sounds good. Uh, there's some banditos that live out here, and there's also some 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 ABT, and it's kind of their little they like to call you know compound or stronghold. Um, everybody knows everybody in this mobile home park, and the person that we were talking about earlier also lives out here. And the thing is, is that he can pretty much if if he ever gets in trouble or if he ever gets to be wanted, he can move from one of these mobile home park you know mobile home to mobile home, and we could never find him. So it's really, it's kind of difficult trying to <clears throat> get in here and, and kind of kind of catch him if he doesn't want us to. There is no sign of the suspect. For law enforcement, trying to break the ABT meth trade is a constant battle. Drug crime is ripping apart Texas communities. Was he gang related? I'm not sure, I'm checking that right now. Even the ABT itself is not immune. Rampant drug use is a major source of friction within the gang and causes problems in the ranks. But Thompson wants to eradicate meth use from the ABT entirely. If you're using drugs, I can't trust you. So that's, that's basically why I'm against it. His senior captain, Lucky, enforces the no drug policy on the outside. With black people, it's crack. With banished people, it's heroin. With whites, it was methamphetamine. But all it's ever done was put us in prison. I've probably done more than most meth, but I'm done. And like I say, from the top down to me, at least, it's very clear that we're done with dope. Zero tolerance on the dope. It's done. Anybody holding rank in the ABT is not to be on drugs, or I'll take their rank from them. Thompson's no-tolerance stance on drug use is designed to help control profits and his own gang members. The ABT only admits the most ruthless and violent white inmates into the gang. Murderers like Jason Trooper Hankins, who once ran the Dallas region as an ABT general. Today, he's serving a 10-year sentence for murder. Thirty-five-year-old trooper has been behind bars for over a quarter of his life. Only 18 when he joined the ABT, he is unpredictable and dangerous. In the penitentiary, when I went down, it was a... Uh, there was a lot of racial violence. Uh, Everybody down in the mid-90s was getting down with gangs. There were some good old old schooler dudes that, that taught me, you know, uh, schooled me. As a young recruit, Hankins learned how the ABT maintains power through terror. If you cross the gang, they will kill you in a violent and public way. Inside prison and on the street, people fear ABT retribution. One of the worst offenses against the Brotherhood is informing, and it's punishable by death. But if you snitch, if you're an informant, I mean, you're automatic. You got an X on your back, a hit on you. On August the 1st, 2006, Trooper and two other gang members turned on an associate they believed had broken the gang's most sacred rule. 
They feared he was giving police details of gang crimes. So the ABT murdered him. The guy was sedated, beat up, took to one location and then took to another location, wrapped up in a chain link fence with center blocks, taken to a pond where he was put into the water and then stabbed in the throat, down the throat with a knife about that long, stuck it down his throat. Dallas police detective John Palmer worked this murder investigation and gathered the evidence that led to Hankins' conviction. They're trying to use terror to frighten people. They, they want to make sure whoever they're dealing with believes that they will carry out any threats they issue. Detective Palmer and the Dallas police have been struggling to contain a rise in ABT violence. I think we can limit them. We can be vigilant. We may slow them down, but I don't think we'll ever stop them. But as police pressure the gang, the ABT fights back. On the night of December the 18th, 2004, sheriff deputies in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, responded to a domestic disturbance call. When the deputies arrived, they confronted an ABT member who had just murdered his pregnant girlfriend. The ABT member shot one of the deputies. We have a shot fired. Bob, you okay? While the deputy searched for his partner, the ABT member opened fire again. Six, six, uh, shots fired. I've got a man down. Oh. 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 The second deputy wounded the ABT member and after putting him in handcuffs, shot him dead with a bullet to the chest. The killing outraged the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas and they demanded revenge. From within prison, Thompson allegedly composed a coded letter approving the killing of the sheriff's deputy. An ABT meeting was assembled to plan the murder. Undercover federal agents, posing as ABT members, infiltrated the gang and set up a hidden camera. The New Mexico ABT leaders had no idea they were being recorded. The FBI arrested the gang members before they could carry out their plan. They charged two ABT gang members with conspiracy to kill a law enforcement officer. Both men received 10 years in prison. Although James Thompson was accused of writing the letter approving the killing, his trial ended in a hung jury and he was acquitted of all charges. The FBI foiled this plot, but the ABT has proved they will go after anyone, including the police. Now, a rival white prison gang threatens the ABT. And Thompson steals a tactic from his rivals. What's going on? And steers the ABT in a new direction. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is a prison gang whose power extends far beyond prison walls. Inside the prisons, the ABT recruits the most violent white men with the promise of making money and belonging to a brotherhood. You gotta handle your business. You have no choice. You have to represent. It gives you something that makes you not want to be a bitch, per se. You know what I mean? It gives you a reason to fight over and above anything else. Because now I'm representing the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, you know, and I've got brothers that depend on me. 
recruits sign a blind faith commitment promising unquestioning loyalty to the Brotherhood for life. And recruits are lining up to join the ABT in alarming numbers. Watchdog groups like the Anti-Defamation League monitor racist activity and are working to understand the growth of racist prison gangs. Because the gangs guard membership information, exact numbers cannot be known. But it is believed that one in every ten inmates in the US is affiliated with a racist prison gang. Several things are fueling the growth. Success breeds success in some respects. So if, if these gangs are perceived as respected um, in the prisons, they can attract more recruits. Um, the fact that these gangs basically deal in meth um, makes them very attractive to parts of the country where meth is increasingly becoming the drug of choice. And so they can cook and sell and distribute meth. Uh, they get more followers that way as well. People kind of want to get in on the action. But the ABT doesn't accept everyone. Those who don't make it often join Texas's second largest white prison gang, the Aryan Circle, whose violence rivals that of the ABT. But unlike the ABT, which puts profit over ideology, the Aryan Circle claims to promote white pride and separatism as its top values. Greg Freeman, the leader of the Aryan Circle, has been in prison for 15 years, serving time for a murder he committed when he was 16. We believe in uh, separatism. We have the right to an, an identity that we shouldn't be shamed for, it shouldn't be guilty for being white. We believe in the preservation of our, our heritage, our culture, our traditions, and we want to uh, make sure they stay. Freeman joined the Aryan Circle after entering prison. When people come to prison, as soon as they come here, the, the racial lines are drawn. There, there is no, I'm not gonna acknowledge my race. If you're black, you're immediately going to the black side of the, the unit. You're segregated yourself. It's, it's, it's a natural segregation in the world. You don't have to because you can you can duck and dodge and do your own thing. But in here, you're forced to deal with it. He was attracted to the Aryan Circle's white separatist beliefs over the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, who will work with other races if it means making money. It's almost a crime to have an identity if you're white in, in the free world. It's, it's really a simple matter that as a race, our numbers are dwindling. We're going to be extinct for too long. Not my lifetime, maybe not my grandson, but it's, it's coming. Unlike the male-dominated ABT, the Aryan Circle sells itself not as a brotherhood, but as a family that includes female members. Cheryl Buchanan, also known as Wicked, is one of four board members of the Aryan Circle. She oversees all Texas Aryan Circle members in the free world. Wicked keeps the gang's secret paperwork and controls the flow of communication from leaders in prison to soldiers on the outside. I just have a lot of letters. They're from the federal penitentiary. They're from the Texas prison system. They're from the free world. They're from the out of state. Her fiance, Brett Gregory, is also a member. We are the, probably the most organized white group both inside and outside the penitentiary. We are individuals with uh, white separatist ideas and values. We are for the betterment and appropriation of the white race and for uh, family. Both Wicked and Gregory have done their own time in prison. Uh, I got busted with co uh, heroin, cocaine, and uh, methamphetamine. Gregory was 18 when he was incarcerated. He credits prison with forging his white supremacist beliefs. You know, you go to the penitentiary and you pick a side, and that is the side that you were stuck with. And a lot of whites, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have really a choice, you know. You have to, you know, represent yourself, uh, and, or it's going to be bad. Wicked and Brett are passing their white supremacist ideals to their children. Hitler! Come boy! They've even named their dog after one of their heroes. Uh, he's really gentle. He's a loving dog. Hitler, come in. The couple claim they are now working to change the violent and criminal image of the Aryan Circle. 
But we believe in uh, being positive, protective members of society, you know, sticking with our own race, and teaching people to live healthy lives outside the walls. Though the Aryan Circle professes to no longer being a criminal organization, Deputy Mike Squires is skeptical. I really don't buy it, because, uh, you know, hey, if, if AC wants to get out of the game of being a criminal group, hey, I'm all for it. <laughs> but do I really think that's going to happen? No, I don't. Either way, the mainstream message of the Aryan Circle is only fueling its growth in membership. And Thompson, of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, is looking to copy that success. Now, his faction of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is trying to distance itself from the brutal history of the gang. The savage and sometimes random killings, the wholesale trafficking and abuse of methamphetamine. Thompson claims he wants to take over the gang to push the ABT away from illicit drug trafficking and into the mainstream. After making a lifelong commitment to the Brotherhood, quitting wasn't an option. So the only option I had was, you know, go to the top and change it. Instead of pushing drugs, they'll sell ABT merchandise. I have projects that I'm going to push into it, which is the clothing line, jewelry. The legitimate business is just as best we can, manufacturing T-shirts, selling prints. It's a way to keep the money flowing in without being bothered by the police. I can venture out into uh, roofing, plumbing, anything that a bro's got a talent at doing, I can build a business around him. He can own that business in a certain amount of time, and then he can pay a due to the corporation. The ABT captain, known as Peanut, is the new model gang member. I'm in the process of learning how to be a crane operator, and. And I'm strictly legit, legitimate. I mean, I, I don't do drugs no more. I'm clean. I own my own house. I've only been out about nine months, and I've already bought my own house, bought my own car. I mean, got a good job. The next move in Thompson's power struggle is to stage a very corporate-style coup. They trademark the name and symbol of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. The white supremacist hate gang has become a brand. If and when the ABT ever goes fully legitimate, it will still be an all-white, closed society. But the ABT has always been driven more by money than by principle. Who invented the telephone? Who invented the automobile? Who invented the airplane? Who invented the computer? Who invented electricity? All the major inventions of the world. Who created them? Where'd they come from? Come from a white person. And law enforcement welcomes the new public face of the ABT. There's increased watching their activities. There's increased prosecution. They basically put themselves in a position where uh, law enforcement has the ability to strike a final blow. For Thompson, that still seems a long way off. Two days after the taping of this interview, he gets some very good news. Facing 20 years on a charge of witness tampering through a letter he sent from jail, he receives 18 months in prison. With time already served, James Thompson may be free in as little as one year, and he'll have no more restraint. All that remains to be seen is in what direction his ambitions lie. Well, I think the only way they can stop me is keeping me in here. Because I think once I'm on the outside and I can move around and do what I need to do and work and, and put things in place, I don't believe there's no stopping me. I believe that with all my heart. 